and we've got a shorting block. So the turn for this little piece of plastic that can lift off and move is called shorting blocks. In other words, they take the two pins and they short them out. They put a piece of metal between those two pins. And there is a specific procedure in which you take that off and put it back on and that clears out that non-volatile memory that is often called CMOS. Okay? You must know how to do that. Usually it's a, a three-step process. Uh, it's usually in the position uh, that it, when you have the motherboard, the position that it's in right now is that CMOS, the battery, is directly attached to that memory. And so the set settings that you make in the BIOS are saved in that RAM. When you shut down the computer and lift it and move it to this pin, in fact there's a pin, these two pins right here, then you boot up, it then removes the battery from that memory and clears that information out. Yes? Mm -hmm. Everybody there? Yes. Nobody has a problem with that? Okay. You guys are amazing humans. All right, so let's go back to our drawing here and we're going to work slowly from this topic. So here we are. Uh, we're getting a little bit comfortable with um, the process of bias. Bias is a very important. Uh, we know that it is firmware. It's basically software burned into a chip. Um, it is also known as bias. We know that configuration changes are saved somewhere in RAM, and that's usually the south bridge. Not always. Every, every evolution of motherboards, uh, the designer is free to put that small amount of memory wherever he wants to. But your lithium cell on the motherboard is going to be tied to that memory, and that's what we call NVRAM non-volatile memory. We have heard it called CMOS. CMOS. So it's also, so it's very confusing to the new student because so many terminologies are used uh, and I'm trying to tie all those terms together so you understand many times we're talking about the same thing. We know that BIOS runs, it does a post and then it looks for a bootable device that could be a hard drive, a CD-ROM, a flash drive, and a NIC, but the NIC must include some kind of firmware on that network card, and that firmware is called, that software inside that chip is called Pixie, Preboot Executable uh, Environment. And we'll get into Pixie, don't, don't go there yet, we'll get into Pixie, because we're going to plunge into some good stuff. So BIOS has the job of basically initializing the motherboard. That's one of its main jobs. On the, when we look at the motherboard, there is immense amount of complex digital circuitry. We've got chips everywhere. So when we apply power here, let's say this is a CPU, uh, this is a south bridge, and you've got chips all over the motherboard. When we apply electrical power, most of these chips that are on the motherboard go through what is called a power-up initialization. This is why, listen to me very carefully, we have two types of boot. We have a warm boot and we have a cold boot. Listen to me carefully, this is some really practical stuff. Those chips are initialized and information is stored inside those chips. When I do a reboot, I tell Windows 8, restart, none of those chips are changed or modified. Their contents and their state, the state that they're in, is not modified. What is changed is the operating system is reloaded into RAM, fresh and new but the chips have not changed. The only way to get a complete re-initialization of both the operating system 
and the motherboard is do what? <coughs> do what? Shut down. Whole boot. That's right, a shutdown. Exactly. So the only way to totally reinitialize the motherboard and the operating system is a cold boot. You can have some really bizarre operating system problems, and the problem is because the hardware has not been reinitialized. You did a restart, you got a fresh operating system, but you never reinitialized the hardware. Now, is this a big problem? It's a not an everyday issue, but it can be a problem, especially as we get into Windows 8, Windows 8.1, and I'll explain later. It is very important as we get into Windows 8, Windows 8.1, that you occasionally cold boot completely, and I will tell you that sometimes in Windows 8 and 8.1, it is important to actually pull the plug. All PCs, all PCs today use what is called always on power supplies. All PCs today use what is called always on power supplies. You all understand this very well. You go home, you grab the remote control, you stand 20 feet away from your television and you hit the what button? Power. You hit the on button, power button. And what does that television do? Now think about it. Was that television really off? No. Absolutely not. I mean, you didn't send electricity through the air. <laughs> yes? Was the television off? No. no, it was not off. It's always on. It's always on. It looks like it's off. It acts like it's off. But if it responds to that remote control, it's what? On. It's working. One of the problems as we get into the new operating systems is that that our PCs are always on. Now we know that they go into these low power states where in reality they draw very little power. In other words, when I shut all these computers down at 9 o'clock, there is probably not a whole lot of power being used by the PCs in their off state. But in reality, if you pull the PC back and look at the network card, what's flashing? You bet. Those link lights are flashing. Is that PC off? No, there's a whole lot on. So many, all our computers are always on. Let me give you some wise advice. If you're dealing with some really strange, funky operating systems, especially as you get into Windows 7, Windows 8, and Windows 8.1, many times you need to pull the plug. Because then, what happens to everything on the motherboard? It gets reinitialized. I just had that recently. I couldn't get a USB. I had a USB device that I would plug in to my Windows 8 machine, and it wouldn't recognize it. What? You plug any USB device into Windows 7, Windows 8, and boom, it recognized it. But the way that Windows 8 and Windows 7 work today, uh, we'll get into it, they save much of the boot up process in a single file on your hard drive. So it speeds up the boot process. And we'll get into that in a minute. So the only way to solve the problem was literally shut down the operating system, go behind the computer, and do what? Pull the plug. Pull the plug force all hardware to totally go to a cold state, re reapply power, now everything reinitialized, re then boot up the operating system, and guess what? My USB device now is recognized. You're going, wow. 
how long we have to wait between that pull out and that pull in? Sometimes it's a certain great, time. Great, great question. You have capacitors inside your power supply, it takes probably about 10 seconds for them to totally de-energize. So I would count to 10 and then plug it back in, yes. So a cold, um, a cold state would actually be when you plug the plug, not even when you press the shutdown? We're thinking when we do a shutdown, everything reinitializes. And here, most of the hardware does. But a lot of the hardware, because it's an always-on power supply, never gets turned off. I have had to troubleshoot a number of really weird issues. And the only way I could fix it was pull power completely and force everything to reinitialize. <coughs> so we have a number of new issues with power, always-on power supplies, always-on motherboards, it is sometimes, for example, we had a network card issue where it would not work with Hyper-V, which is a technology we're going to talk about. We could not get it to work on this PC. And just out of desperation, we pulled the power plug, plugged it back in, booted back the operating system. It worked perfect. So listen carefully. Your, you must understand that motherboard on occasion needs to be totally de-energized so it can completely reinitialize. Okay? Everybody there? And this is becoming a really problem with Windows 8 and Windows 8.1. How many times have you found yourself with a cell phone? You're, you've got a cell phone and your cell phone is acting really weird. Really weird. And no matter what you do, you restart the cell phone, it still doesn't do it. And a friend says, crack open the back, pop the what? Battery. Pop it back in, and what happens? Perfect. What's the problem? The exact same thing. Is that motherboard inside, that ARM processor, all the digital chips, even though the operating system, the Android or iOS, is reinitialized, the motherboard, the hardware, never got to completely reinitialize. So you pop the battery out, and what happens? Voila! It boots up fine, your problems go away. So the yes. same way you re take the power of your modem and your router, sometimes it doesn't work or doesn't communicate. You take the power out for 10 seconds, put it back, and then everything works again. I have Bright House. I have a Bright House yeah. modem. I have, <laughs> um, I have a feature where they provide me phone, voice over IP. Uh, you can't just hit the back of the button of their router. You have to go in, remove a battery. Yes? Why are they asking me over the phone to remove the battery? Make a shutdown. The same problem. Their firmware, their hardware, never gets to totally de-energize until I pop the battery, remove the power, take off the cable, and force it to reinitialize. And then voila! My phone works better, my cable works better, and my internet works better. Same exact problem. Are you all getting the idea? So it's not just to the PCs. It's your phone, it's your home router, it's everything. Very important, very, very practical. You must understand this. So, our, our, uh, these chips get reinitialized when power is applied. Uh, they do not all get reinitialized when we do a restart. So a cold boot or a cold, a cold boot is where we, we hit the power plug and it boots up. This is a, this is a real good uh, a reboot. We also know we have a warm boot. And remember, this is just the OS. We're only rebooting the operating system. We're only rebooting the operating system. Now, I will tell you, when you do a warm boot, drivers, software drivers, are then connected to the chips that they're supposed to talk to. So this is why when you reboot the operating system, you still don't get the results. The trouble doesn't go away because the driver talks to the chip, but the chip has not reinitialized and is still in a locked state or an incorrect state. So sometimes cold boot is the only way of clearing all the initial, clearing all the registries, all the data out, 
then rebooting, getting a fresh OS and a reinitialize. And then there is the pull, pull the plug. And that is where you're really having strange behaviors. And you do this on your cell phones, you do this, and we just talked about it, okay? This is the most thorough, um, this is probably the most thorough type of reboot. Okay? You don't have to do it always. Like I haven't had to pull my battery out of my cell phone probably <coughs> in a year. But I'm not, a fr I've learned that when the phone gets weird, yes? yes. Pull the what? Yeah. So I always keep it in my mind, okay, I may have to go to this step. 